As soon as the eagle reappears, things begin to go wrong. Radio communications break down. Messages to Eagle must be relayed through my comments of with the command module Columbia. Throughout the crucial final checks, contact with the Eagle keeps dropping out. And flight director Gene Kranz inches closer to aborting the mission. With the vital computer links temporarily holding, the moment of decision is now. Okay, I'll flight controller is going to go for landing. Retro. Go. Lido. Go. United. Go. Crawl. Go. Dowcom. Go. Insta. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom. Go. Go for landing. Eagle Houston, you're going for landing. Over. Identity. Go for landing. Go. Hurtling toward the moon at 3,800 miles per hour, Neil Armstrong notices his checkpoints are all appearing too soon. This means a serious navigation error. At these speeds, three seconds long means missing the safe landing zone by three miles. Suddenly, the computer starts firing the maneuvering thrusters, jolting the ship back and forth. This has happened in simulations, but never this much, never this violent. The smooth descent is becoming a bumpy ride. Before that is fixed, a problem with the onboard computer. The astronauts have rehearsed for thousands of possible malfunctions, but not this one. It had been considered too unlikely. Seconds seem like hours as everyone struggles to remember the meaning of a 1202 program alarm. The deadline to safely aboard is vanishing fast. Well, the reading on the 1202 program alarm. 1202 means the Eagle's onboard computer is overloading. This means Houston is blind, unable to make navigation corrections or interpret the data coming from Eagle's computer. Armstrong and Aldrin are on their own. Mission Control decides they can go ahead. If the data link doesn't fail again. 1,000 feet and Neil Armstrong can see that the computer is proposing to put them down in a dangerous place. That landing site is full of boulders. If they land there, they will never take off again. At 350 feet, Armstrong ignores his computer navigation and veers away from the lucky landing site with no time to explain to Mission Control. Okay, I'll fly controller next time. In Mission Control, everybody is stunned. At 300 feet, the Eagle has left its flight plan and taken off at full speed across the face of the moon. Eagle, Houston, it's descent to fuel. The monitor, over. 90 seconds of fuel remaining. Now less than 200 feet, and the Eagle is too low to safely abort back into orbit. They call this part of the flight plan Dead Man's Curve. No level. All that's left for mission control is to read off the fuel remaining in seconds. 60, 60 seconds, 60 seconds. The entire moon landing has come down to two men and one minute. Forward. Forward. 23 times, two and a half. And down to 30. 30. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Forward. Lights on. Down to the half.
A short time later, history is made again. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. For one incredible moment, we are one people with one history, watching our destiny unfold. That's one small step for man. surface just after we had landed I'd gone down standing on the surface and looking at planet Earth for the first time uh, seeing the beauty seeing the finiteness of it the, the limits of it uh, and realizing what a shame it was that people were confronting each other on that planet without realizing what it was doing to the planet it was a very emotional moment for me. I actually shed a couple of tears. Uh, something totally unexpected for for an engineer, fighter pilot to be to be crying up quietly up there on the moon. Mankind had achieved a tenuous foothold in the heavens, and a new and exciting world lay waiting to be explored. Benefit mankind 
that we, because of science, we simply cannot do on Earth. It's such a big universe, and it's kind of strange to think that just this one tiny planet was chosen to have life on it. I hear they're finding new planets or moons, and they're finding out more about how stars are working, and it makes me feel like it's trying to tell me something. What's it trying to tell you? That you belong up there with them. The Apollo program ended in December of 1972, but our journey into space is just beginning. I'm Neil Armstrong. The future of space travel is being written right now in the dreams and imaginations of a new generation. Perhaps that's the greatest legacy of Apollo. It shows our children and grandchildren that the courage, imagination, and the will to explore, no dream is impossible. Please watch your step as you exit the theater.